And um, I'm going to get back to my Baptist roots today. So the message the Lord has for us has three points. Amen. Everybody knows in a Baptist church we have to do a three-point message. So I went all the way back to my Baptist roots, Scotty, and three points. And I'm excited about this because this message is relative to what we just got, or what you just got done talking about. And that is outreach and evangelism. Should not all of us be in the place where we share Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. To share his story of what he has done in our life. So the message this morning is beyond walls. Beyond walls. It's taking your faith further than a Sunday morning. Taking your faith further than a Sunday morning. I think it's an exciting message. I was uh, so looking forward to bringing this message to you. And I've had to condense the time to put this together. So again, you know, we usually go an hour and ten minutes here at Fellowship of the Hills. You should have seen their eyes light up when I said that. But today we're only going to go an hour. So, uh, no, we won't go that long. But I'm excited about this message because I believe that it's important for us, no matter who we are in Christ, that we should be willing to share the good news of what Jesus Christ has done in our life. More so today than I think ever before as we live. Amen. I love what you said a moment ago. We, have, we think that we have a generation that's lost. I don't believe that. I had the blessing yesterday of being in Lake Hartwell, and, and one of our other young men, Will, who uh, his, his brother was on the trip, he's a professional fisherman, he came in, and, and to be able to use that platform, and to love what you do, and to share Christ, not only is using the platform to be able to fish and enjoy what he's doing, but he can use it to become a fisher of men, amen? So the Lord gives us gifts and talents to use for his glory. So what are we doing in sharing our faith are we just coming in and staying here on a Sunday and absorbing the word are we taking out and are we bringing out the gospel of Jesus Christ within our community beyond the walls taking your faith further than Sunday well this morning I hope you have your bulletin with you on the back side of it you'll notice there are the three points it can be very simple for you to capture the points this morning because I think they're a relative they are important as to what God would have us to do in sharing his gospel first and foremost I want you to notice this the very first point this morning you have to care how many of you care for people yes. somebody cared enough about you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you amen? amen you guys cared enough that you would go to Camp Bethel and put and exert energy in building and putting things back together because you knew that folks were going to come in, 3,000 plus students and others were going to come in and use that facility to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he used your gifts and your talents because you cared about the gospel getting out. But how many of us truly care for others? Oh, we care about things. I was joking with you, and thank you, Scotty, for that illustration of what happened this past week. But yes, there are things that we care about. We have possessions that we like, right? My possessions, I like them until they start costing money, then they're gone. <laughs> Amen? How many of you are like that? We'll get rid of it, right? But we can't get rid of people. Amen? Well, I, I know some of you do. But <laughs> no, you're not supposed to. How many of you believe that we're to love like Jesus loves? Yes. Love people no matter where they came from, no, no matter what background they have. We're to love. Isn't that what the Lord said? He says, number one, love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with everything. Love the Lord God. And Jesus said, but I'm going to give you another command. If you fulfill these two, you've fulfilled all of them. He says to love one another. Do me a favor this morning. We do this because I want to see if you really care. If you really care this morning. Tell Scotty you love him. Did that? Hey, didn't that feel good, Scotty? Amen. Amen. Hey, hey, uh, let me let's see. Celia. Tell, tell Celia you love her this morning. Happy birthday. Was it your birthday? Happy birthday to you. Tell me you love me. Good. If, if you would meet me in the back, I've got my mortgage book for the for the house. Will you do me a favor? Will you look at that person next to you and just say, I love you in Jesus. I mean, did, didn't that feel good to have someone tell you they love you? Amen? Because it felt like somebody cared about you. You know what? In Jesus Christ, we're to have the love of Christ flowing through us. So in order for us to go beyond Sunday in our faith, we have to care 
for others. Now, I want you to go to some scriptures with me this morning. I, I, I would like to take three people this morning and use them as an example of what it means to care. First off, I think we need to go to the book of Jonah. Y'all remember the story of Jonah? If you're here this morning, you don't know the story of Jonah. You go with me to Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, and, and, and he says, go to the great city. God says, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and he headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and he sailed for Tarshish to flee. Now you've got to know something about the Ninevites. The Ninevites were a people that literally uh, God was disgusted with them. He was angry with them. They were a people that were uh, in depravity. They were a people that were immoral. They were a people involved in witchcraft. Craft. You, you might say that they were people in the deepest, darkest sin. But God tells his prophet Jonah, he says, I want you to go there and I want you to tell them that they need to repent. And what did Jonah do? First off, let's one, understand one thing. Jonah got the call, did he not? You got the call by God to go. And then some of you got the call. In fact, all of you that are here that went to Camp Bethel, God called you and said, go to Camp Bethel. There's work for I want you to do. How many of you, don't raise your hand. How many of you said, but you know what, I got something else I'd rather do. I, you know, I, I, you know I, I don't know if I can afford to go. You know, there's some things coming up. We're, we're, some of us are like that, right? Uh, my, my thought on Jonah was is that he knew that God had this wrath for the Ninevites. And I'm just surmising here that Jonah probably thought that if he didn't go, God would just enact his justice, and that would be one less group of people we got to deal with. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. You think, well, Marty, that's kind of weird. Isn't that sometimes how we feel? What do, you, what do you mean you want me to go over to that area there? Lord, why don't you just deal with it and take care? Have any of you ever felt that way about some people? Why don't you just deal with those people, Lord? I don't, I don't like them. I don't like what they do. I don't like what they stand for. I don't like what they represent. God, just pour your wrath on them. And God says, no, I want you to go and share the love of Jesus. We have to care. Amen, church? We need to care. Jonah, at this point, didn't care. In fact, Jonah was going to do whatever he could to what disobey the Lord and to run from the call that God given him. There was another one. His name is Jesus. Turn with me to John chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. John chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. It says, now he, this is Jesus. He said, it says, now Jesus had to go through Samaria. You've got to understand something. I don't have time this morning. That the Samaritans uh, were considered a spiritually corrupt people, pagans. They had built their own temple. And the Jewish people would do whatever they could. In fact, they would go almost a week's journey crossing the Jordan so they didn't have to deal with the people of Samaria. Now, how many of you know people like that? You'll go all the way out of your way in Walmart just to not see someone. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. You know, it's amazing when I'm walking through Walmart, I know people see me and they duck around a corner and go in another direction. They're going, oh no, he's going to talk to me. I don't want to talk to him. You know? You've all done it, right? So, so the, the, they would do whatever they could to stay away from somebody. They don't want to be around them people. They didn't care. But Jesus cared. Jesus didn't do what the rest of the crowd did. And let me ask you a question. Uh, are we supposed to be like the rest of the crowd? Or are we supposed to care? Yeah. We're supposed to care. No, notice this. It says in verse number 5, it says, So he, being Jesus, so Jesus came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, he sat down by the well. And it was about noonday, noon of the day, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me something to drink? You see, Jesus had to go through Samarita, Samaria because there was a woman there that he had to come in contact with because he cared about her life. Isn't that supposed to be who we are? 
as followers of Christ? Aren't we supposed to have the love of Christ to care? So we see the two different types, right? We see Jonah who was being sent by God. He refused to go and went in a totally different direction. And then we see what we're supposed to be in Christ. No matter who they are, no matter what they've done, no matter where they came from, no matter what their hang-ups are, we're to love them through Christ. Well, there's the second part of this message. Not only do we need to care, but we must be willing to go. We must be willing to go. It's one thing to care about someone. It's one thing to care about the lost, but it's always somebody else's job. I love it when folks will say, well, pastor, that's what you get paid to do. I guess you might say in a sense that's true. I love Jesus so much because he paid the price for me that I'm willing to share the good news of what he's done in my life. How about you? Amen. So I guess you might say that I did get paid to do it. Amen? But no, hey, guess what? You did too. When you received Jesus Christ, there was a payment for your sin. Wouldn't it be great if you shared that with someone else because you cared? Well, where's God going to send me? Pastor, I, I can't get up and preach a message. Well, maybe the Lord didn't call you to get up and preach a message. Maybe he called you just to share the gospel with that person in Walmart. Maybe he called you just to share the, the love of Christ with your neighbor. Or maybe he called you to send you to Bethel where you could use your hands and your feet to do the work that will assist in planting the seed and watering the seed and reaping the harvest for Christ. We have to be willing to go. Well, let's go back to Jonah just for a moment. Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. We're going to be in chapter 2, verse 1, and chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to put them all together for you. It says, Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. You see, Jonah refused to go, and he's going to go in a totally different direction. And let me tell you something. When God calls you to do something, God doesn't give up on you. He's going to give you another opportunity to go. And he is also going to remind you that he asked you to do something so Jonah at that moment took a three-day three-night residence in the big fish motel so God prepared a fish to swallow Jonah and a huge fish swallowed Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights chapter 2 verse 1 from inside the fish Jonah prayed how many of you would be praying inside the fish have you ever wondered what it must have looked like inside that fish? I mean, there had to be some fish for you to be able to sit down and pray. I wonder what he sat on. Maybe a molar or something? I'm not sure. So he sat down and he prayed. Chapter 3, verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. How many of you are so thankful for the second chances? I don't know about you, but sometimes the Lord gives me a third opportunity and a fourth opportunity and so on. I'm thankful for his mercy and his grace. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time and said to him, Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message I give you. Verse number three, it says, Jonah what? Obeyed the word of the Lord and he went to Nineveh. You know why Jonah obeyed? Because he was the first chicken of the sea. Amen? Amen. But isn't it amazing? It took being swallowed by a fish for Jonah to respond to the call of the Lord and go. Here's my question to you. Are you willing to go? What will it take for you to go? I've shared this testimony many times. I won't belabor this and share it again, but when the Lord called me to preach over 20 years ago. I was at First Baptist Church of Monticello teaching a Sunday school class that was growing, very active in our, my career, looking forward to what the Lord had in store, and I was very thankful for what the Lord was doing in the life of Susan and I in, in the ministry there with the young adults. And sitting in the pew as the Pastor Knowles, was, Pastor Knowles Dr. Knowles was speaking, I don't remember anything about the message except for the Lord speaking to my heart and calling me. 
Now, I'd heard that call for over a year. And I kept thinking, he's got somebody else he's speaking with. Maybe there's a bad connection here at the church. <laughs> but on that Sunday morning, the connection was clear. And I walked forward and grabbed his hand. And Susan, of course, I've shared this story. She sat there and thinking, oh, no, do we have problems I'm unaware of? And I grabbed his hand. I said, the Lord's called me to preach. As if he already knew that the Lord was doing that. But I wrestled for a year, and it's been an amazing journey to be in the call that the Lord has for us, doing what he's called us to do. I'm thankful that the Lord didn't send a big fish. We go to Acts chapter 8. I want to show you a, another individual here. His name is Philip. Many of you know this story of Philip, but for those that don't, Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 30, picking up at verse 26, it says, And an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Get ready, go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he got ready, and he went, and there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court of the official Candace the queen of the Ethiopians. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship. You see, the Spirit had given a message to Philip to go. But where, Lord? So, so I, I want you to go, Philip, in this direction. And when you get there, I'm going to give you more news. How many of you want it all? Where's the planner in the group? I heard you say that. You're going to plan everything out. Yes. How many of you want the plans? I want to know down to the detail what we're going to be doing. How many of you plan your vacations? I don't like those people that plan vacations. Because you know what they do? Hey, we got to go to this one. But I'm having fun here. I don't care. we got to go over here. How many of you have been with those people? I cut them off, man. You know? You go do your thing. I'm having fun here. Amen? Planners. Lord, I'll do it, but you got to give me every detail as to where I'm going to be from hour to hour, minute to minute. <laughs> You know what? If you want to really enjoy the journey of serving the Lord, just go and let Him plan it all out. Amen? That's the ride, man. It's the greatest ride in the world. You know what? There's no greater ride than getting on a roller coaster you've never been on before. Amen? Well, I know all the roller coasters at Dollywood, and I know where all the turns are at, but when I first got on, man, that was something else. Amen? You didn't know it was coming. And then when you got through the thrill of it, you go, wow, i got to go do that again. Amen? There is nothing greater than going and serving the Lord and not know where he's taking you. So here's Philip. He says, go. And I want you to notice here in verse number 28. And he was returning and sitting on his chariot. This is the Ethiopian unit. And he was reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. Verse 29 says, then the spirit said to Philip. Here's the next part of what you got to do, Philip. Now go to his chariot. The spirit said to Philip, go up and join his chariot. What does it say Philip did? No, it doesn't. Come on. It says Philip had to think about it. <laughs> Philip had to say, wait, this is not in the plan. we got to stay here. I'm having fun over here in Gaza or Jerusalem or where is the car. I'm, I'm having fun over here. I don't want to go sit in that chariot. That's not what it says. It says, Philip, what? Amen. Wouldn't it be great if we had such a desire to share the good news of Jesus Christ that we would run wherever God wants to send us. <laughs> I love it when the Lord said, Marty, Susan, go to Blairsville. What's in Blairsville? Well, your brother's building the house there. Go to Blairsville. For what? Build a church. Uh, Tallahassee's fine. I kind of like it here. You know? you know, got a nice house. Go. How many of us are willing to go? I'm going to give you a few verses. Write these down in the column. Number, number one, you've heard me say this is a staple here in this church, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Listen, what's it say? It says, trust in the Lord. Can I just say, don't raise your hand, but I want you to just look within your heart. Do you trust the Lord this morning? If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have trusted God with your eternity. And if you've trusted God with your eternity, which you have not experienced yet, wouldn't it be great to trust Him with the here and now and the tomorrow? Amen? 
Trust in the Lord with all what? All your heart. It's a matter of the heart. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And that's what's wrong with many of us. We lean on our own understanding. It doesn't make sense to me. So I'm not going to do it. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm not going to give it a try. We need to throw our own understanding out the window and lean on the understanding of God. The wisdom of God. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways. In what ways? All, all your ways, right? In all your ways, acknowledge Him and what? He will direct your path. How many of you want the Lord directing your path? How many of you have ever chosen a path and you knew it wasn't the path you should have taken and you've looked back and you go, oh man, I should not have done that. Yeah, yeah right? There was a time when, um, I'm going to be honest with you, um, as I was progressing in my career, and they started allowing us to work off-duty jobs. Guess when a lot of the off-duty jobs were? On weekends. They paid good money on weekends. So I started skipping church. That wasn't good. You know what's kind of interesting? The Lord has his way, amen? If you, he, he might put you in the belly of a fish. You go out and make money, right? So you go out and buy a toy. And guess what happens? Your air conditioner goes out. Right? Or you get a flat tire. I mean, the Lord has his way to remind us he's in charge. And he's got a better way. He's got a better plan. Amen, church? So I acknowledge that the Lord has a better plan than my plan. And I want to follow his plan. How about this verse? Psalms chapter 37, verse 5. It says, commit your way. What's the word commit mean? It means surrender. Let's go back to what was said in Proverbs. It says, with what? All of our heart. And if we have our heart in something, we are surrendered to it, right? Come on, guys. How many of you have a heart for your lovely wife next door to you right there? Yeah. You notice four guys raised their hands. Serious? <laughs> really? That's it? You guys, man, we just, just had Mother's Day. What's up with you guys, man? <laughs> Let me try the ladies. Ladies, how many of you have a heart for your husbands? Look at there. Praise the Lord for that. Honey, did you raise your hand? <laughs> when we have a heart for something, we are totally surrendered. We are totally committed to it. Amen? So if I have a heart for the lost because I care for them, then I am totally committed to go wherever God wants me to go, to do whatever he wants me to do, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because I care about you. Philip didn't have to question what God wanted him to do. Philip knew that this Ethiopian eunuch was at that moment going to have an opportunity to hear about Jesus Christ. So he ran to share the good news. Psalms 37 says, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him. How about this verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jer Jeremiah 29, 11 says, the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you. We just talked about that, right? God has a plan. How many of you want to be in the will of God? You want to be in God's plan for you. I've shared this message many times before in years past. Maybe it's time to, to bring this message out and dust it off. I remember, uh, in fact, it was down at the old building. I brought some puzzle, puzzles in, and I, and I took the puzzles, and I threw the pieces uh, within the congregation on the floor. I think they were on the chairs and all of that. And, and, and you pick up the piece of the puzzle, and, and the, the interesting thing about that is, is you have no idea what the picture looks like, Right? Did you know God knows every piece of the puzzle of your life? And he knows exactly where it goes. He knows the picture. And I think I've told this story before. We're going to be with a few of our grandchildren this week. They have since grown up. Thank the Lord for that because they used to love puzzles. I hate puzzles. <laughs> They're time consuming. So I would try to put the wrong piece in the wrong place. My granddaughter's very good at that. Happy it doesn't go there. Well, today it does. <laughs> They know that that's not what the picture looks like. And you know what? God knows when there's a wrong piece that you're trying to put in the path of your life, in the journey of your life. And he says, I don't go there because I've got the right piece. How many of you want to be in the right piece of the puzzle that lets God, that you let God put where it needs to be for the picture of your life? So he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, he knows the plan. Here's the other verse. One of my favorite verses. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Listen, I think Jason said it a moment ago, he's never going to send you until he's what? 
prepared you, prepared the way for you. Amen? So then I trust him with everything. He's going to become my strength. He's going to, he's going to provide for me financially. He's going to take care of everything I need if I am in his will and in his plan and following the journey that he has for me in my life. Amen? He becomes my strength. Well, and, and then there's the next part of this lesson. The next part of this lesson is not only do we care about the lost, we care for one another. Not only do we respond and we're obedient to the call, but we must be, once we get there, whether it's at Walmart or whether it's at Camp Bethel, wherever it is that the Lord calls us. I think, Scotty, you're going to Honduras this week, right? To share the Guatemala and Honduras this week. Susan and I are going to Wichita, close. Um, but anyway... <laughs> You gotta be willing to share. You gotta be willing to share what the Lord has done in your life. Now, this, this slide I put up for you here, and, and please don't, don't think I'm being disrespectful, but in, in order for us to share, we have to, and there's a word that I used here, we have to be tactful in how we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I had put up a couple of signs there, and, 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 and again, I'm not being disrespectful, but I think that there is a way to share the good news of Jesus Christ without being offensive to people. Amen? We know the Word of God offends us because it what? It reminds us of who we are. It reminds us of the need. But, but here are some things that I have found kind of interesting. If, if I go up to someone and, and I tell them, hey, listen, you need to be washed in the blood. If they know nothing about the gospel, they're thinking I'm crazy. What blood are you washing me in, dude? Can, can you imagine that? I mean, we're in this room, in this house today. We're talking about the blood of Christ. We all know what that means. But we live in a world today, trust me, we live in a world today where most of our generation today has no idea, no concept of who Jonah is, who Moses is. They don't know uh, the, the Bible like we know it. So if I walk up to someone and say, listen, I want you to know you're a sinner and you need to be washed in the blood. That can be quite offensive. Jesus didn't do that with that Samaritan woman, did he? He also didn't walk up to her and say, listen, I want you, to, want you to know how sorry and no good you are. You're dying and going to hell. Boy, imagine how that make you feel. Imagine me walking up in a Walmart to somebody that I've never met before and say, you're dying and you're going to hell. Or where are you going to spend eternity? Then they're going to think, are you here to rob the place? Right? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Sometimes if we're not careful, we can become offensive before we are even able to share the good news. Amen? Or, or maybe this one. We come up to someone and we start quoting scripture. They've got no concept of Bible theology or Bible doctrine. So you know what I try to do? I just try to share the simplicity of the gospel of who Jesus is. You know what else I try to do? I just share this with you. Just do exactly what Jesus did. Let me develop a relationship first. Amen? Try to befriend this person. Develop a relationship that will open the door so I can share the gospel with them. So we need to be careful in how we share. We need to be tactful in how we do this. Sometimes it's just sharing your story about his story in your life. So let me just go to a couple of verses with you this morning. Let's go back to Jonah for a second. Willing to share. Jonah chapter 3, verse 4 through 5. It says, Then Jonah began to go through the city one day's walk, and he cried out and said, Forty more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. Then the people of Nineveh believed in God. At that moment, Jonah was reminding them that God was going to do something. That his wrath was coming. And if they would repent, God would withhold his wrath. And it's an amazing story as you, consider, as you continue to read. And the people repented. And it says the people believed in God. The woman at the well. John chapter 4, verses 13 through 15, verse 26, and verses 28 through 29. Listen to this. Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give will never be thirsty. 
But the water that I will give him will come in, the, in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. And the woman said, Sir, give me this water that I will not be thirsty, nor come all the way here to draw water. You see, she didn't quite understand what Jesus meant. How is it that she would never have to come back to the well for water? Jesus, in verse number 26, as Jesus said to her, he said, I am he. Because she was questioning about who this prophet was that would one day come and, and bring salvation. And Jesus said to her, I'm he. I'm the one. Jesus says, I am he, the one speaking to you. The woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to the people, come see a man. You know, I could just stop right there and complete this message right here. How many of us need to say, I want you to just, just come with me. Come see this man. Come see this man who gave me a new life. Come see this man who changed my life. Sometimes the greatest story is telling his story in you. Let me ask you a question. If, if I were to meet you at a place, and then we were to, I was happened to show up at Fellowship of the Hills, and you've been, been a member for years, been coming here. I, this would never happen at Fellowship of the Hills. I know that, so it's just a, an analogy. And, and I see you sitting in the house, and I would come up to you. How would you feel if, if I was to say to you, man, I've seen you at the gym several times, or I've seen you, you know, at other places. I would have never guessed you went to church. Oh, that'd be terrible. Amen? Yeah, wouldn't that be terrible? Should, should not my life reflect Christ in me? Amen? Shouldn't the joy of the Lord be flowing through me? Listen, I don't care if you're driving in Atlanta on I-75 in rush hour traffic. The joy of the Lord needs to be in you. Amen? Please, if the joy of the Lord's not in you, take the bumper sticker Fellowship of the Hills off the back of your car. Come see a man. I want folks to come and see the Jesus that changed my life. Amen? I, I want them to see what he's done in my life. It's not about fellowship of the hills. It's not about First Baptist Church. It's not about vertical. It's not about choice. Joy. Listen, we serve the same Jesus. God has given us the opportunity and the blessing to, to serve and to be a part of a local church that fits the flavor, the style of our worship. Some folks may say, you know what, I love Brother Marty, he's a, he's a wonderful man in the Lord, but I just can't handle him walking back and forth on the stage, drives me crazy, amen? <laughs> I love Brother Scotty, Pastor Scotty, you know what, man, he's a great teacher, but man, them, them tennis shoes, I just can't handle it, you know? I know there's somewhere in scripture that says you can't wear them tennis shoes. How beautiful the feet of those, How beautiful the feet of those yeah, they serve the Lord, right, amen, amen. <laughs> Doesn't matter what color. Amen? Amen. Maybe, maybe you go to a different local church because the style of music's a little different. Right? I, I saw there was a pastor, I'm part of a network of pastors. And, and it was kind of interesting. This, this one was kind of humorous. He, he, I won't mention the church's name. It's in another state. And uh, he, he reposted it. It says, this church is looking for a new full-time, notice I said new full-time pastor. The other one only lasted 12, about 13 months. And, and he said in there, he says, uh, he says that part of their uh, process of selecting a new pastor is that you have to be willing to sing from the red hymnal. That's okay. You know up front they sing from the red hymnal. I sang from the red hymnal. Our music wouldn't be in the red hymnal. But you understand what I'm saying? There are different flavors. But listen, it doesn't mean that we're not serving the same Jesus. Amen? And you know what? We should be willing and wanting and having a desire to work with one another to share the good news of Jesus. You know why? Because you can reach people I can't. Amen? 
Maybe you have gone through something that I have not been through. You, you know, uh, as I think about certain things that people have gone through in their life, there are some things that I have not experienced. And if I have someone in the fellowship that has experienced something, and the Lord has brought them through it, you know who I'm going to use to help me witness to that person? The person that's been through what they're going through. Amen? Because they got credibility in the experience of their life. Amen, church? Wow. Come see a man who told me everything. And then, then let's, let's not forget Philip in Acts chapter 8. Verse 30 and 31, 35 and 38. Listen to this, and I'll wrap this up. It says, Philip ran up to him and heard him, Philip ran up and he heard him reading the book of Isaiah. And he said, do you understand what you're reading? I love that. Philip, Philip didn't go up there and begin arguing scripture. He didn't go up there and start acting like a theologian. He went up there and he said, hey, listen, do, do you understand what it is you're reading? And what did the eunuch say? He said, not unless somebody tells me. Hey, isn't that, isn't that what I'm supposed to be doing? Hey, I don't, I don't know much about this Jesus thing. I, I don't know what that means, washed in the blood. I don't know what it means to be born. Imagine going up to somebody and saying, you need to be born again. Dude, how's that happen? You know? I don't understand. I've heard it, but I don't What's that mean? Pat? Sir, can you tell me? Ma'am, can you tell me? What does it mean to be washed in the blood? What does it mean to repent? What does it mean to have my sins forgiven? What's this thing about eternity and hell? What does all that mean? Will you tell me? And this is what happened. Then Philip opened his mouth, verse number 35, and beginning with his scripture, he preached what? Jesus. He didn't preach doctrine. He didn't preach theology. He didn't pull out the Greek and the Hebrew and try to explain it all to him. You know what he did? He just preached the gospel. He just shared Jesus. Can you imagine what this world would be like if we as followers of Jesus Christ We'll leave on a Sunday morning and just share Jesus. You want to see revival? You want to things, see things change in our community, in our state, in our country, around the world? Then maybe we should start sharing Jesus. Because this is what happens. It says he preached Jesus to him. Verse 38, the Ethiopian eunuch ordered his chariot to stop, and they both went down to the water. Philip, as well as the Ethiopian eunuch. And it says he was baptized. The Lord may use you to plant the seed. He may use me to water the seed. And he may grab Scotty to, to reap the harvest. We were all part of this together. Amen, church? But first, we have to be willing to care. We have to be willing to go. And then we have to be willing to share. We're in this house today. Maybe you're here this morning. You've heard some of this terminology. But I want you to know this, God loves you. God loved you so much that he sent the very Jesus that I've been talking about. The one that can change your life, can give you a new life, can give you a promise of eternal life. He loved you so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to go to the cross to pay a sin debt that you cannot pay. He loved you that much. And he freely offers it to you. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. Anybody. No matter where you came from, no matter what your background is, no matter what you've done, no matter how great you think you are, no matter how many toys you think you have, Jesus went and gave of his life for all of us, all of humanity, paid a sin debt that none of us could pay for so you and I could have a relationship with God. But the only way we can do that, now keep in mind, the debt has been paid. And all we have to do is call on him. The word of God says to call on the name of Jesus Christ and thou shalt, King James Version, thou shalt be saved. This morning the question is very simple. Have you ever called on the name of Jesus Christ? He said, well, pastor, I, I'm a member at First Baptist. I'm a member at Vertical. 
I hear this stuff all the time. I'm a member. Well, we don't hear that here at Foth because we make sure we sit down and talk to you. But I'll hear people say, well, I've been a member of this church for 20 years, but that's not the question I've asked you. I ask you, have you, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Have you ever asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins? Have you ever asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life? Well, pastor, I go to this church. Pastor, I tithe. That's not what I ask you. Have you ever asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior? That's my question to you. Have you ever asked him? Do you believe in what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you? If you do believe, and you've never asked him, why don't you call on his name today? That's the gospel. That's the message, the purity of the gospel that I want to share with others. It's that simple. Would you pray with me? Father, I am so blessed to be in this house. To be loved so much by you that you would want a relationship with me, Father, by sending your son, Jesus Christ, to pay for my sin. A gift, Lord, that is freely offered to me and everyone in this room and all of those that we come into contact with throughout the journey of our life. First and foremost, Lord, my prayer is, is that Everyone in this room is called on the name of Jesus Christ and they have a relationship with you because of the blood of Christ. And Lord, may it not be said this morning that they did not have an opportunity for those that are here and have not. Because Lord, right now, where they're sitting, in the stillness and the quietness of this room, they can call on you. They don't have to come forward. They don't have to grab my hand. They don't have to do anything except call on the name of Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, I come to you now. I confess my sin that you have paid for on the cross with your blood. And Jesus, at this very moment, I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, thank you for the gift of eternal life that will never be removed. Thank you, Jesus. For what you did for me the word of god says that your life will be forever changed the apostle paul says that old things are passed away all things are going to become new there's just something about the grass being a little bit greener the sky being a little bluer and love being a little more sweeter because of what jesus has done in your life why don't you call on him today make him the lord of your life I'd like to welcome you to the family of God. You see, without Jesus Christ, you're not a part of his family. The simplicity of the gospel is just believing in what Jesus did, calling on him, receiving it, and making him the Lord of your life. So what do we do with it? What do we do with Jesus after Sunday morning service? Do we hold on to it or do we take it and share it? Y'all told me that you loved me. You looked at the person next to you and you told them you loved them. You even told Scotty you loved him. You know, if we love each other, we ought to take that love of Christ in us. And we ought to share that with others. That's my prayer for you today. That when you leave this house, that you remember that your faith goes beyond a Sunday morning. That the gospel of Jesus Christ is within you. And to share the good news of Christ. Praise God.